I was on that path for a while. However, I just couldn't stay on that path because I wanted to spend all of my time writing. So that's what I started doing. I started spending all of my time, giving all of my effort and all of my energy into writing personal development, self-help, and success articles. Now, Needless to say, this use of my time didn't fare too well for my career as a traditional engineer. And it is at this point where you probably have questions about me, such as, how did you go from being a well-respected, highly paid electrical engineer at a great company with a great salary and great benefits to being an unknown, unpaid writer with no experience and no connections? You may also ask yourself, hey, didn't this guy know that he didn't want to be an engineer before he finished the entire program, graduated, and received a degree? And I must admit, these are very valid questions because I had these questions about myself for a very long period of time. Because yes, being a writer at first seems to be the furthest thing from being an engineer two totally different skill sets using two, two totally different sides of the brain in which lie at two totally opposite ends of the career spectrum. However, as I began to look closer at the subject matter of which I was writing, electric living, the powerful life, electric living, the science behind the law of attraction, mechanism of success, attracting the life you want, the 21 keys of success, what I realized is that I was still using the same scientific principles of electricity and magnetism that I learned as a student sitting right in these classrooms here at Mississippi State. The fact that I wasn't using the principles to design high voltage transmission lines or step up and step down electrical transformers didn't make me any less of an engineer. In fact, I began to feel that I was even more of an engineer because I was now using the principles in a new and totally different way. I was using the principles of electricity and magnetism to develop a workable science of success and personal achievement. And this excited me. This is what invigorated me because what I saw is that people weren't really stepping out. People weren't really pursuing success. People weren't really giving their all to their personal achievement and going for the true hopes and goals and dreams that they had in their life. Most people, including myself for a while, were willing to step back and rely on something safe and reliable in order just to make it. And as I pondered why this was the case for so many people, I came to the realization that, you know, there didn't seem to be a reliable method by which one could be truly successful, living the life that they really wanted to live, doing things on their own terms by pursuing what they were passionate about. Sure, every once in a while, someone would step out and make it as a musician or an artist or an inventor or a writer or an entrepreneur, but these people were few and far between. And the reasoning for their success was these un the uncharacteristic and Hard to describe terms such as luck, being at the right place at the right time, or being a person who was simply good with connections. Anything but reliable. And even when we did have the opportunity to hear from that rare, successful, rich, and famous person, from their own words and from their own mouth, their reasoning for success was often given in these unquantifiable terms such as having faith, being persistent, which somehow manifested itself into mental toughness. But as an engineer, I really wanted to know why mental toughness was the best answer that we could come up with to answer the question of why did a person succeed? Not that mental toughness was the wrong answer, but how could we quantify that? What did that really mean? Why was it that mental toughness was the common denominator of success? In other words, why was it that you would never find a truly successful person 
living the life that they wanted to live, doing things on their own terms by pursuing what they were passionate about who didn't also possess the quality of mental toughness. And as this question stayed in my head, I came to the realization that there is one simple fact of life that none of us can ever get away from. And that reality is the fact that life is not fair. Life is unfair. It simply is. You know, several years ago, Bill Gates famously gave a speech to a group of high school students. And in that speech, he gave 11 rules to success. And his number one rule to success is that life is not fair. Get used to it. Now, you might ask yourself, well, what does that have to do with mental toughness? Simple. When you get used to and accept the fact that life is not fair, you don't view the inherent unfairness of life as a reason to quit. And therefore, you move through and you persist through any and all obstacles and difficulties that life may present to you. And this is what a mentally tough person does. A mentally tough person does not view the inherent unfairness of life as a reason to quit. But most of us aren't mentally tough. Most of us expect life to be predictable and fair. But there's two problems with this type of thinking. First of all, it simply isn't. Life simply isn't fair. And the second problem is that when you do expect life to be predictable and fair, when life does throw you that inevitable curveball or punch you in the gut or kick you while you're down, you view that unexpected circumstance, you view that unfair set of events as totally legitimate reasons to quit. And therefore, you give up on your hopes and your dreams and your true desires in life because you can justify it to yourself that life is not fair. And you give up. But you can't give up. Because no matter how unpredictable and unfair life may be, there's one thing that life can never take away from you. And that is your willingness to give your best effort using whatever means you have available in the moment. In other words, if you can fly, then fly. If you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. And if you simply cannot walk, then crawl. But you can't give up. Because what you don't know, and the reason that I am so excited to be here today is that if you don't give up, there is a power that's on your side that you know absolutely nothing about, totally unaware of. Now. I stumbled across this power several months back as I was researching material for my fifth book. And in that process, I came across the work of a physicist by the name of Albert Bartlett. And Dr. Bartlett had this to say. He said, the greatest shortcoming of the human race is our inability to understand the exponential function. Now, you may ask yourself, what is the exponential function? Well, in order to understand the exponential function, we must first understand what a function is. And in everyday simple terms, a function is simply a numerical or mathematical way to represent growth or progress over time. And therefore, an exponential function is simply a numerical or mathematical way to represent a certain type of growth or progress over time. Ladies and gentlemen, what is success? Massive growth or progress over time. And see, as human beings, we, we innately understand and have a concept of growth and progress. 
For example, if I stand in a certain spot and I take 30 steps, each step being one meter, how much progress have I made at the end of my journey? Simple. 30 meters, exactly. Now, this type of growth, this type of progress is known as linear growth, linear progress. And it can be represented by the linear function, which is simply an upwardly sloping straight line. This is how we as human beings innately think about growth and progress. This is our natural way of thinking about growth and progress. However, when it comes to success, there is a problem with this type of thinking because success does not grow linearly. Success grows exponentially. And what, you might ask, is the difference? Well, if I stand in the same spot as before and I take those same 30 steps, each step being one meter, an effort of one meter is what I give. However, this time I take an exponential path, what will my progress be? Now, as unbelievable and as amazing as it may sound, this time around, along an exponential path, I will have made enough progress to travel around the world more than 26 times. Now, you may have heard this before or something similar to it because we've got plenty of theoretical examples of the power of exponential growth. For example, if I work for a penny and that penny doubles each day, the first day I work, I earn one penny. The second day I work, I earn two pennies. The third day I work, I've earned four pennies. And after the fifth day, excuse me, after the fourth day, I've earned eight pennies. Now, how much profit have I earned at the end of 30 days? Again, as amazing as it is to believe, after 30 days of working in this fashion, I have a profit of over $5 million, thanks to exponential growth. However, the idea worth spreading today is not the theoretical power of exponential growth. It's the fact that we have an opportunity in our very own lives, lives to utilize the power of exponential growth for tangible benefits and results in our everyday lives to benefit ourselves, our family, our friends, and our communities. How else do you get a person such as uh, Jeff Bezos, the CEO and founder of Amazon.com, who has managed to amass a fortune of, of over $137 billion before the age of 55? According to CNN Money 2018, the net worth of the average 55-year-old American is $180,000. Now, I'm sure we can all agree on the fact that, yeah, Jeff Bezos might be smarter than the average 55-year-old American. That's plausible. And we also might agree on the fact that Jeff Bezos may be a harder worker than the average 55-year-old American. However, there are limits to this. For how much, smart, how much more of a hard worker and how much smarter can one particular individual be? In the most extreme case, let's say that Jeff Bezos was literally three times as smart as the average 55-year-old American, had three times the IQ. Or he was able to work three times as many hours. If this were the case, and if success grew linearly, then Jeff Bezos' net worth should be around $540,000, which is three times the net worth of the average 55-year-old American's $180,000. However, the fact that Jeff Bezos' net worth is not three times, not five times, not 10 times, not 100 times, not 1,000 times, but 761,000 times the net worth of the average means that there is some other power going on. 
Success does not grow linearly. Now, am I saying that everyone is going to amass $100 billion fortunes or fortunes of even $1 billion? No, that's not what I'm saying. That's not the only indicator or measure of success. But what I am saying is that each of us does have access to that power, the only power which can allow that type of growth, that type of progress, that type of accumulation of wealth to take place over the relatively short time frame, which is that of the human being's lifespan. And that is the power of exponential growth. Now, the secret, the science to unlocking and activating the power of exponential growth in our very own human lives is mental toughness. Because the trademark characteristic of the exponential function ironically happens to be the same trademark characteristic of life that makes people quit and give up on their dreams. And that trademark characteristic is the prolonged period of seemingly unfair returns on our investment of time, energy, effort, and money. Because while a penny doubled each day for 30 days does ultimately give me a profit of over $5 million, at the halfway point, on day 15, I only have $163.84 to show for all of my effort. It is our disappointment with the meager, unfair returns on what we give in life that causes us to quit before we have an opportunity to prosper. And what I want to leave you with today is this. If you are pursuing what you are passionate about, don't quit. Because hopefully you now know that there is a power on your side if you don't give up. And that's the power of exponential growth.